Hi, good morning, everyone. Apologies for the delay. I'm Vivian from Singapore Water Association. Thank you for attending today's webinar on Canadian Virtual Showcase of Water Tech Companies, jointly organized with the High Commission of Canada in Singapore and PUB, Singapore's National Water Agency. We are honored today to have Her Excellency, Ms. Lynn Madonna, High Commissioner of Canada in Singapore, to give us the opening address. Before we proceed, I'd like to touch on some housekeeping rules and disclaimer clauses. To ensure a smooth session, please mute your microphone and turn off the camera. You may communicate with us after the event. Please share your questions in the chat. We will try to provide answers where possible during the Q&A segment. Do identify yourself so we can respond to any unanswered questions through emails. We'll be recording this session and reserve all rights to the video. All information shared is for general information only and does not contain or convey any legal advice or admin assistance. Information shared is true and accurate as of today. The organizers reserve all rights in the provided materials. For today's session, we have Mr. Kuna Shah as our moderator. Mr. Kuna is a SWA Council member and Managing Director and Regional Business Development Head of Asia at Energia, a global leader in organic waste management, maximizing resource recovery from wastewater, solid waste, and agriculture recovery waste. Kuna himself is a chemical engineer with over 12 years of global experience in the space of water, wastewater, municipal solid waste, and bioenergy. Over to you, Mr. Kuna. Thank you, Vivian. Can you hear me well? Yes, we can. Okay, fantastic. So good afternoon to all in Singapore and uh, good evening to all joining from Canada. Uh, first of all, thanks the High Commission of Canada and Singapore, PUB and Singapore Water Association for inviting me to moderate this uh, interesting webinar on virtual showcase of Canadian water technologies. Um, what a great way, uh, of course, besides the nice music we had, uh, to start the day by listening to some of great minds and entrepreneurs explaining latest technologies in water space. Uh, I'm told that we have today an exciting 154 registered participants for the webinar. Uh, Canada has produced some of the world's most innovative clean tech companies and is a world leader in development of advanced water and wastewater technologies. Uh, with one of the world's largest water and wastewater technology hubs, which is uh, home to about 900 water technology companies, research centers, incubators, and programs located within Ontario. Uh, which is uh, called as a birthplace for uh, UV disinfection and membrane technologies. This subsector of water is one of the most mature in the Canadian te clean technology industry with an average company age of 20 years and is also one of the biggest exporting subsectors with 79% of Canadian water and wastewater technology companies exporting. Today, we have the honor of having Her Excellency, Ms. Lynn McDonald, with us to deliver the opening address. This shows a keen interest uh, to promote cooperation between Canada and Singapore. Uh, Ms. Min uh, Lynn McDonald sorry, joined the Department of Foreign Affairs and International Trade in 1996. Since then, she has held several positions in the past years, including legal advisor to Canada's permanent mission to the WTO, counselor and head of trade policy section at the Embassy of Canada in Washington, DC, director of intellectual property trade policy division at Global Affairs Canada, Consul and Senior Trade Commissioner at the Consulate General of Canada in Hong Kong and Macau, and then since 2016 as High Commissioner to Singapore. Without further delay, um, uh, over to you. Uh, yeah, hi. Good, good morning, um, everyone in Singapore. Good afternoon and evening to those in Canada. Bonjour à tous. It is indeed a pleasure for me to join you virtually today for the Canada Water Tech Seminar. I wish to thank our great partners in the Singapore Water Association, as well as PUB, for working with us to present this sharing session on Canadian water technologies. 
I'd also like to give a warm welcome to our five Canadian companies presenting today. These are Tradeworks Environmental, Pani Energy, Waterlix, Sewerview Technology, and Watershed Monitoring. Thank you very much for staying up so late. I also wish to acknowledge and thank our moderator today, who we've just heard from, Mr. Kunal Shah from Energia, a Canadian company with presence here on the ground in Singapore. Canada is a world leader in the development of advanced water and wastewater technologies, and our solutions are mature. Canada is home to over 100 core technology companies with proprietary technologies and related know-how. With our entire wastewater space and water space expanding to over a few thousand companies and supporting organizations. And as Mr. Shaw just mentioned, we have a very strong Ontario cluster of 900 firms where UV disinfection and membrane technologies were first developed. Canada has a strong global niche in disinfected it is infection technologies, wastewater reuse with membrane filtration and UV disinfection systems, and strengths also in leak detection, biological treatment and biosolids management systems, pump gate and valve design, energy recovery systems, and instrumentation and monitoring. It is an export intensive industry. Over 80% of our water and wastewater companies export their technologies outside of Canada, and Asia is definitely a region of interest and of growing interest for these companies. Globally, three out of four jobs are either heavily or moderately dependent on water, which makes water and wastewater technology important, particularly in the face of climate change, urbanization, and population growth. And as both Singapore and Canada work to achieve um, our sustainable development goals. Water is expected to be scarcer than oil by 2030, with demand outstripping supply by 40%. And on top of this, for each degree of global warming, approximately 7% of the global population will face an almost 20% decrease in renewable water resources. It's therefore important, and Canada recognizes, to work with international partners to address this growing and present problem of water scarcity. And I'm very glad that we're able to forge new connections virtually today. The Government of Canada provides significant funding support to our water and wastewater industry, and it is a priority sector for Global Affairs Canada's Trade Commissioner Service, which supports such innovative export-ready companies in global markets. My colleagues, Ratishka Grover and Caroline Morin, both who are participating in today's event, our trade commissioners supporting Canadian clean tech companies in Singapore and Asia, including through introductions to key partners, industry promotion at water events like this webinar, or the Singapore International Water Week. And if anyone participating in today's seminar wished to be introduced to Canadian companies, please do contact us at the High Commission, as Ratishka and Caroline would very much like to connect you with our wonderful Canadian companies and their water and wastewater technologies. I'd like to thank everyone for participating in today's webinar. I hope you enjoy the session. Merci beaucoup. Thanks, Your uh, Excellency. Um, indeed, very interesting to note uh, the, the comments which you had on water as the next scarce resource and global warming uh, and climate change affecting this sector and the commitment of Canada uh, to promote water technologies in Singapore. Um, thank you very much. Uh, next, I have um, uh, with us uh, Mr. Mo Ting Liang, Deputy Director, Industry and Technology Collaboration Department from PUB, to deliver our keynote address. Mr. Ting Liang oversees PUB's technology collaboration efforts with aim to grow technologies through partnerships and also is leading the commercialization initiatives at PUB. Uh, Mr. Ting Liang, please. Hi, good morning, everyone. I hope you can hear me. Is Kunal, is it fine? Yeah, great, yes. thanks. Hi, uh, good morning, Your Excellency Lee McDonough, uh, Ms. Vivian Xiong, Executive Director of the Singapore Water Association. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning to the local attendees and good evening to those in Canada. I hope everyone is well and very glad that the SWA and the High Commission of Canada has come together to organize this event. And uh, after listening to what Kunal and uh, Her Excellency has mentioned, I, I think Singapore and Canada uh, cannot be more different when it comes to fresh water availability. 
um, Canada is richly endowed with water. And the last time I checked, you are the country with the most number of lakes in the world. I think over 560 lakes, if I'm not wrong. And the Great Lakes, which you share with the United States, uh, it forms the largest cluster of lakes, accounting for more than 20% uh, of the total fresh water supply in the world. So in spite of this abundance of water, uh, sorry, I, I, I have not gone to the slides. Please uh, scroll back. Thank you. So in spite of this abundance of water, it amazes me that Canada has fostered a sizable group of innovative water companies. Uh, both Kunal and the High Commissioner has mentioned between 900 to 1,000 uh, water-related companies uh, with 80% of them exporting. So that's amazing statistic. And I first came across the Ontario water cluster uh, several years ago when I first joined the industry. And recently I was uh, informed by the High Commission about the uh, Western Canada uh, water cluster as well. So there's something that you're doing right about uh, grooming and nurturing water entrepreneurs and uh, grooming such outstanding water technology companies. It could be due to the water that you drink. Uh, so I'm very glad that uh, the High Commission has brought together the six companies today uh, to share with uh, our industry as well as with PUB. Um, and let me just step through some slides uh, regarding the opportunities in, in Singapore. Next slide. So I come from PUB, uh, which is the National Water Agency. We manage the entire water loop uh, in an integrated manner. And this means that we manage water supply, uh, wastewater, as well as drainage. Uh, click once, please. And we use recycled water since 2003. And since 2005, we have added desalinated water to our portfolio of water resources. Um, and we actually operate the whole water cycle as a closed loop. Our mission is simple. Uh, we supply good water, reclaim used water, as well as tame the storm water. Next. 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 Okay. Next. Okay. So um, as a small country, we face many challenges and water is just one of them. Uh, we are so small that in the land area of the federal capital of Ottawa, you can fit four Singapore's inside. And this smallness means that we have limited rainwater catchment capacity. Uh, we might have a lot of rain, but we are not able to ca capture every single drop of rain that falls on our, our country. And this is the root cause of our water scarcity. Uh, then we have rising water demand. Uh, spurred by the twin drivers of population and industry growth. And in fact, we expect the water demand to double between now and 2060. Unfortunately, our land size is not going to double correspondingly. So we have to find new water sources to satisfy the demand. At the, and uh, lastly, we face rising expectations of uh, service delivery of uninterrupted water supply uh, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And this has forced us to, to step up our game, to meet the expectations of the people and provide the service that they've been accustomed to. Next. For water supply, we have turned to water recycling and desalination to di diversify our water resources. Uh, these are inexhaustible sources of water and they come with the advantage of not being impacted by climate change. So they are resilient sources of water that we can rely on uh, regardless of the cut that we are dealt with. Next slide. We would not have been able to add water recycling and desalination to our portfolio of water resources if not for the use of technology. So um, I must say that technology is a key to enabling Singapore to overcome our water challenges and to meet our long-term sustainability needs. With technology, we are able to increase our water supply we are able to improve our water quality and at the same time reduce energy use, uh, uh, chemical use, manpower uh, reliance, as well as waste generation. Next. So to prepare Singapore for the future, we have developed a technology roadmap to guide us in our research investments uh, to help us focus, focus uh, our attention on technologies 
that we should be looking at. And there are nine domains in the technology roadmap. I have chosen to highlight five here on the slide today. Uh, and as you can see on the screen, in the areas of desalination and water reuse, our aim is to reduce uh, energy consumption. Uh, we want to increase our wastewater treatment energy self-sufficiency, reduce water consumption by the industries, explore more resource recovery uh, from our waste streams, and last but not least, uh, we need to increase our coastal defenses against the rising seas. So collectively, these are the opportunities for the Canadian companies to work with us, perhaps to develop technologies with our research institutes or validate new technologies uh, with PUB by using PUB as a living laboratory. Uh, we'll be happy if you could introduce to us technologies that we might not have heard of. So Your Excellency, if your country has solutions for these uh, issues that we are grappling with, we'll be happy to be put in touch with the Canadian companies involved. Next slide. In fact, we have been working with the industry very closely. We recognize that many countries have done good work uh, in water management and have been developing useful uh, water technologies uh, for us. And over the last 16 years, we have built a vibrant ecosystem of 200 companies in Singapore. Um, they comprise both the overseas companies as well as the local SMEs. And uh, many overseas companies use Singapore as a springboard for the region. And we continue to leverage our scientific strengths and our status as a logistics and financial hub to anchor more foreign water companies in Singapore. Uh, I would like to use the next two slides um, to probably just give an example of how Canadian companies have worked with us. Next slide. Um, so, Kunal being the moderator today, I've chosen to highlight uh, Energy as one of the companies that have worked with PUB closely. Uh, they have successfully demonstrated that co-digestion of used water sludge and food waste can enhance biogas bio uh, production. Uh, in fact, two to three times more than the yield uh, that you will get compared to conventional gas, di uh, conventional sludge digestion. And so this technology that Energy uh, has, has put on trial with us will be implemented in a new plant that we are building currently, uh, which we will complete by 2025. Um, another example, next slide, um, is that of the island water technologies. I believe this is a startup. Uh, and they have a sentry bioelectrochemical sensor system, which are currently on trial with PUB. I believe there are seven units of these sensors being put um, uh, on trial uh, in Singapore. And uh, the trial will end by the middle of the year. And we are optimistic and hopeful that sentry will um, uh, find that there is a business opportunity in Singapore and perhaps in the region as well. Next slide. So supporting um, the foreign companies in Singapore is the Singapore Water Exchange. Uh, it is where the Water Association is located. It is a purpose-built facility that provides a conducive environment for collaboration of, and, and, and innovation between um, uh, for water companies in Singapore. Currently, this vibrant ecosystem has about 30 companies and organizations ranging from SMEs uh, to MNCs and to the different water-related water associations. Um, and we host a range of activities to showcase different water technologies and we connect the overseas companies with the Singapore water industry, just as we are doing uh, today. And it is my wish that someday, uh, some of the six companies that are speaking today, they will be members of the Singapore Water Exchange and they will join the Singapore water ecosystem as well. Uh, next slide. And allow me to make a pitch for the Singapore International Water Week. Um, so since the 2008, we have been organizing the Singapore International Water Week as a platform for co-creation of water technologies. Um, the ninth edition of the Water Week will be held this year. Um, traditionally, we draw about 20,000 delegates to our event. But unfortunately, the pandemic has uh, affected the way that we organize the Water Week. And this year, we have decided to do a hybrid uh, event 
whereby we call it the SIWW 2021 Spotlight. Uh, the hybrid event will be a high-level summit for water leaders in governments, utilities, academia, and the industry. Local attendees will be present at the uh, uh, Marina Bay Sands, whereas the, the overseas attendees will call in. And this is a one-day event uh, co-located with the World City Summit that is organized by the Ministry of National Development. But at the same time, uh, we do have a two-week SIWW online uh, a component as well. This is a series of thematic webinars comprising a virtual water convention as well as a virtual water exhibition. So I, I, I must uh, uh, you know, show appreciation for the way the High Commission has supported previous water weeks. I had a meeting with the High Commission just a few weeks ago. I'm very heartened by the support uh, that the High Commission uh, has uh, voiced out. Uh, I really hope that although this is a virtual event, at least for this year, we hope that the High Commission can lobby for participation and we'll be able to see the 900 water companies, at least some of them, uh, showcasing their innovative technologies to the rest of the world uh, through the Singapore Water Week. So um, that's all I have. Thank you very much. Uh, over to you, Vivian. Thanks, uh, Ting Liang, uh, for that interesting keynote. Uh, and I would say that thanks to PUB for being an industry leading utility with an open attitude to always embrace new technologies. Uh, thanks for also highlighting our work with Singapore uh, for so many years. And uh, uh, it, it's very welcoming. And to all the companies today we have from Canada, uh, this is here a utility with, with one of the most open minds in the world to adopt and improvise uh, technologies in the real world and not on a lab scale. Uh, with that, uh, let's move on, ladies and gentlemen, to the six interesting companies we have. Today, we have a lineup of very interesting technologies from the world of artificial intelligence to sludge management, from the world of microbial treatment of wastewater to digital and advanced pipe condition assessment and innovative data management. Uh, first company we have is Tradeworks Environmental, and we have amongst us Ms. Meni Mancini, uh, founding partner and president of Tradeworks Environmental and founding partner of Tradeworks Environmental Asia PT Limited. Um, Tradeworks is redefining, if I may say, the way wastewater is treated conventionally, and you will hear more from her in the presentation. Uh, Many, over to you, please. Thank you so much, Kunal, and good evening to everyone. Thank you to the High Commission, Your Excellency, our uh, supporters, PUB and SWA. We're excited to really showcase our technology because here at Tradeworks, we believe that everyone has a responsibility to do their part and protect the planet. And to do our part, we offer solutions designed specifically to address two of society's waste creating practices, which is the treatment of organic waste and wastewater. We use our proprietary technology to integrate into existing systems and really offer unique process analytics that help us really address hard to treat challenges. And we specifically address and work with sustainable development goals, nine of them. We're very proud to support nine of them through our waste to energy or waste to reuse solutions and really support organizations work towards achieving their corporate sustainability goals. Uh, we're proud to say that we are based a Canadian-based company, but we have a global network and growing of distributors and agents, and we actually have a footprint as well in Singapore. And really what I'd like to do during this time is demonstrate some of our proprietary technology and explain some use cases in terms of what we do. So how do we support the circular economy? We have a suite of microbial formulations that are really designed to optimize and enhance the biological treatment process of many systems. In addition, we have the hydro process, which is really designed to combine and optimize the analytics behind our microbial formulations. And we have our prime screen technology, and we have a team with very deep knowledge and know-how. I'm not gonna age our team and share the years of experience in biological systems, but we have deep roots in terms of providing expertise and really becoming an extension to our clients uh, or organization. 
We, as I mentioned, we support nine of the sustainable development goals directly, and we have array of applications. And the key fundamental aspect of our technology is that we're focused on prevention. We believe that by targeting the source of the problems, we can reduce many of the byproducts that are inherent in these processes. And this, this um, slide that I'm showing provides an indication of some of our applications that I won't be able to get into too much detail, but I will try to showcase some examples of how we apply our technology. The first example that I'm gonna show you is the use of our microbial hydro series in the collection system of a municipality. By dosing in targeted locations, we are a, in manholes and lift stations, we are able to precondition the water before it enters into the treatment plant. So we're able to produce improved influent quality, which significantly improves the overall downstream treatment benefits as well. Um, the other application that we have is our prime screen technology. The example that I'm showcasing is for municipal application in the United States in Delphus, Ohio, where this facility uh, required some assistance with compliance issues, as well as our objectives, which we are specifically focused on objectives and results, was to help them get into compliance, introduce some fine screening technology, and reduce energy consumption uh, for their facility. And we were able to achieve this uh, with our prime screen, which is an example here indicating the screen's design, which is a unique design. As you can see, the panels allows for ease of, of uh, access for the operations personnel and allows for a clean environment. So the bacteria in the collection system provide the degradation of, of the FOG. So this screen is a two-year-old screen and you can see how clean the inside of the screen is because of the synergistic effect the microbes working in the collection system, and then the fine screen at the headworks. We offer safety because the system automatically bags the screenings and they're removed from the treatment process and you can see how clean the screenings are. And this enables us to increase the treatment capacity of a facility. I really wanted to show and highlight the adaptability and flexibility of application of our technology in its various applications. In this particular application in a municipal um, facility, this is where the, this facility was slotted to be decommissioned because of performance issues, particularly in its uh, enhancing of the nitrification process. And we were able through the collection system to do that and more, enhance their system and resulted in us um, not decommissioning this facility and get an extension for five years on this facility that's based out in Halifax and we're extending our applications into other locations in Halifax. But what's key, and I have a very busy slide and I don't expect anyone to read all these numbers, but really I wanna showcase that the underlying hydro application is based on our strong analytical capabilities to really validate the results and optimize performance. It's one thing to measure and it's, an, an, and it's another thing to really be able to analyze the information and use um, data to synthesize complex data as a tool to make decisions for the operations staff as well as to adapt and refine our application because we are completely results driven. Now, this slide I'm showcasing specifically for you, Kunal. I don't have time to go through it, but I just want to highlight the underlying benefit of optimizing biological systems allows us to do things in composting facilities and anaerobic digestion facilities, such as enhance the biological process. So the results that we can produce is using the same footprint, we increase the throughput, and ultimately it results in better return of investment for systems and more money, which is ultimately what we wanna do. And really I'm showcasing my um, sweet spot, my passion, which is really, uh, as mentioned in the onset, we have over 560 lakes in Canada and it, we are thrilled to be able to support lagoon or lake remediations. And that's really the highlight of, the, of what our technology can do because essentially water connects us. And so we all need to work together and we appreciate platforms like this that allow us to showcase our capabilities around the world and really move that global sustainability needle forward. 
And so we welcomed the opportunity. I know it was really fast and we didn't have a lot of time, but we really welcomed the opportunity to engage with you to show you specifically what our proprietary technology can do to your applications to improve the overall biological systems and enhance do more with less footprint. So thank you for that. Thanks, Benny. Uh, that was a very interesting articulation of your work. Uh, for all the attendees on the call, you must have seen many running at 100 kilometers an hour, and that's because we have five minutes for every uh, uh, presentee. Uh, thanks, Benny, again. So next we have in line Thank is you. Devesh, um, co-founder and CEO of Pani Energy, and a person I've known for a few years now. He has been collectively labeled as the future of British Columbia, named 30 under 30 by BC Business. Pani uh, is leading the advanced digital solution space for desalination, industrial water and wastewater plants with its AI coach for plant operators at zero dollars capex. Uh, I think it would have opened eyes of a few people on the, on the webinar today, allowing for a low risk solution that increases plants reliability, reduces OPEX and allows plant owners and operators to have a companion in their operations team to watch over the plant 24 seven and provide hard bottom and top line benefit. Devesh, please show us what you've got. Thanks. Devesh, can you hear us? Can you hear me okay? Perfect, go ahead. Thank you very much, Kanal. That was a great introduction and, you know, thank you everyone for your time. Really excited to present today. Um, my background is, um, like Kanal mentioned, the co-founder and CEO of Pani, and I started the company after doing some years of research at University of Victoria in Canada. We realized that, you know, it's a very important sector, but it has been very nascent in terms of some key analytics tool for many reasons. And we saw a strong opportunity to kind of use data as it is, people as they are, and hardware as it is, uh, but put a layer on top of it uh, to provide more value to, to the plants. Last time I was out with PUB, I, I second all the compliments in terms of the support. We were there uh, in 2019 uh, when we were part of Imagine HGO. So, uh, Pani, uh, we are commercializing the digital operator coach. And as I can all mention, what, what we aim for is to make our customers don't even realize, uh, they don't have to know what AI is. And that's really when we think the real value can be realized. From the plants we've worked with, the value we've seen, we've been able to create is lowering OPEX, reducing downtime, increasing equipment lifetime, as well as increasing plant efficiency. That's with existing people, existing data, and existing hardware. Um, recently, uh, with some good success and growth in our company, Government of Canada recently announced an investment of $2.8 million for us to advance the technology even fast. That's our federal minister of innovation. So how the technology works, we plug into an existing plant. Uh, here, the plant pushes data to the cloud, to our system, what we call the coach. The coach aggregates different sources of data, lab test, historical sensor data, logs from different parts of the plant, and it knows the design of the plant. And based on that, it's running analysis 24-7. Um, Whenever coach finds something odd or finds an opportunity to improve the plan, it sends a notification to the operator. Hey operator, I'm noticing something, take action and this why I should take the action. Operator follows their own existing system and take that action on the plans, PLC, SCADA system and improve plans performance. So work for their used to with an added layer of intelligence that they can work with every day. We work only on water treatment, wastewater treatment, treatment applications. We don't do conveyance or um, distribution. We focus on industrial water, uh, wastewater, desalination, and municipal applications. This is where we're able to utilize our ears of R&D in models and a hybrid AI that uses first principle models in combination with machine learning. So let's walk through a couple of use cases of a plant without PANI and a plant with PANI. And I've taken some examples from our auto application um, we've been working with over the last uh, couple of years. So what we find, let's say if we take a food and beverage um, auto plant uh, upstream or uh, an industrial auto application, normally an operator is not able to predict when the amendment is going to be damaged. They can only react. That you know, leads to downtime, loss production, 
for the bottling part, as an example, and reactive maintenance for these assets. With Pani, the AI coach is doing all the heavy lifting and it's recommending the operator when to service and how to service. So now their plan is predictive. It prevents any unseen downtime and extends memory lifetime. Now, this is an example of a, a weekly email that the operator gets on every Sunday, letting them know what is the key activities next week. Do they have to service a train? Do they not have to? And what are the key uh, items they should handle this week? You know, truly taking a plan from reactive to proactive and predictive. Another example is, you know, currently there's a lot of signals, you know, too much happening for an operator who's running around fighting fires to really proactively optimize their plan. That again leads to downtime and lower OPEX. With our technology, the AI coach, again, does that analysis and is able to predict things in the future. So in this case, for one of the customers, it predicted a pressure drop 48 hours in advance. Um, and based on that, it recommended the operator, hey operator, consider changing your booster pump or cartridge filter operating set point. So preventing an event which would have otherwise uh, been quite costly for the plant. And finally, you know, things like even census drift and other data points can, can go out of control. And the coach is again, watching these things and providing that recommendation to the plant operators. Now jumping to a case study in a similar auto plant. This is a 6 million liters per day desalination facility for industrial plant. It's one of Asia's largest uh, manufacturer. This is a deployment in India. Here we found the plant had a lot of high uh, RO energy costs and challenges The trains were on and off. We were able to provide them feed flow rate and recovery recommendations uh, and dynamically that allowed them to reduce their energy cost. Then high chemical costs in the coagulation flocculation system, the operators were not, you know, it was more of an art than a science to really find the dosing. We have a digital jar test technology in our platform through which they got recommended the right polyelectrolyte and polyelectrolyte dosage, reducing their chemical cost, but really also helping with the reliability. And then finally, on the membrane side, we were able to predict when's the right time to service their membrane, prolonging their membrane lifetime, but more importantly, giving them that uh, reduced risk and confidence in running their uh, water asset. This is just a quick example. It's a recovery on the, um, um, you know, on the <laughs> y-axis and the x-axis time. And the operators to get confidence, they actually tried PANI and not PANI uh, recommendations where we recommended them feed pressure and feed flow usually every other shift, depending on when the power plant changed. And we also tell them what they could expect. So they, we gain their trust and confidence, and then they can also actually relatively see the benefit they're getting. And in this case, they were actually also able to increase the recovery relative 12%. And if your plant's pretty say million liters per day, that's a significant amount of benefit they can get. Um, you know, we're working with, uh, in Asia, we're working with uh, players like Tata and also in North America, like Aquatech. We've seen good benefit working with them in industrial wastewater as well as municipal waters. Um, and in summary, you know, it's a digital operator coach. It's holistic plant performance improvement for water treatment wastewater. It's an ROI based model, zero dollar CapEx, um, and we do all the work. And what we're looking for here, my, my ask is for deployments. We're looking to make joint success stories in Asia Pacific and offering the value proposition of reducing risk, growing OPEX, reducing downtime and increasing recovery. Thank you for your time. Thanks, Devesh. Uh, looks really interesting that AI can help in optimizing existing processes. And actually it is not a compete. I mean, it, it doesn't compete with human beings, but AI can be an enabler and can help reduce costs for utilities in these interesting times. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Canada is also home to some of the world's leading AI companies. And uh, with that, we move on to the next presentation, which we have the honor of having a mathematician, uh, not a magician, uh, and a management scientist, uh, Medard Varedi, the founder of Waterlix. Medard established Waterlix to deliver digital solutions for water problems. He believes the existing data in utilities should provide much more insight than it currently does. It also provides test plans and manages pilot projects to help utilities evaluate offers from other solution providers in a transparent way for all sites. Medad, over to you. Can you hear us? Can you hear me? Fantastic, go ahead. Okay, great. Uh, thank you very much for the introduction. And here it is, so yeah, thanks. Uh, for the opportunity to present Waterlix services and products tonight. 
hour today. Uh, we know that uh, Singapore has enormous data about its assets and operation. It is very advanced in terms of its uh, infrastructure management and it has a high level of digital readiness for using AI solutions. I'm interested to learn more about the top priority problems as we learned today. Uh, to solve and see how water leak services can connect with any of those. Water leaks provides AI solutions and optimization. Uh, it supports open data to attract problem solvers. Uh, water leaks helps to do a feasibility study for the new AI based solutions and assist utilities for easier decision making um, to use such solutions. We thought that there is a gap there and uh, as an AI, AI solution provider ourselves. Now, about the WaterLeaks AI solution, WaterLeaks has worked on multiple AI solutions to increase the efficiency of utilities by reducing energy waste or leakage reduction. WaterLeaks provides accurate condition assessment for better asset management, early detection of leakage in the distribution network using SCADA data. We have analyzed and connected water demand to economic factors. Um, the increased accuracy of predicting the water demand supports better water pricing and, uh, and support in this regard. WaterLix analyzed satellite images to detect pollution and working on labeling CCTV from pipes um, using AI. We are currently planning for smart solutions in the sewer treatment process and propose green solutions by cooperating with another innovative company. In the past few years, WaterLix has proved its capability in solving problems using AI. We also found a problem that AI can solve for water utilities. Uh, the problem is clarifying uh, if an AI solution fits with the needs of a utility company. Utilities can't rely on any proposed AI solution and need to make sure that it works for them and it is feasible to implement. Answering the following questions, is critical and uh, we can help. Questions like identifying the validity, accuracy, and reliability of the proposed solutions, testing them in a pilot project, and comparing the results with the existing performances and benchmarks of the, uh, of the specific utility, the direct and indirect cost of implementation and integration into the system. Utilities usually don't have enough time or experts to assess all offers, we are glad to cooperate with, you to, with them um, that are clear about their priorities to cover the gap. It needs a clear uh, test plan, requires setting KPIs and benchmarks based on existing performances, uh, and uh, have a look at the proposed solution and find its benefits and how we can increase the target KPIs. Uh, the test should be transparent for both sides. We make sure to get the best version of the proposed solution and keep both sides well informed, informed about opportunities to improve the offering and risk of the project. WaterLix also uh, offers optimization solutions as a separate or joint offering with its AI services. And uh, uh, we've, uh, we have customers in Canada, like City of Kitchener, Guelph, London, and recently Niagara region in Ontario. And also we are working with uh, um, four locations in the US um, through their uh, local universities, local universities, um, which both verifies our offering and provides a good introduction for us. Um, so if there's any data and there's a will to solve a problem, WaterLix is uh, happily open to help. And I appreciate your time and hope to learn more about the opportunities and connect with you. Thank you. Thanks, Medan. I think uh, we all agree that data is key to make future decisions and data is getting more and more and more important to do more uh, with less, actually. Thank, thanks. Next we have is uh, Nicholas Gortz uh, from Sewer Wu. Actually, Wu means uh, sewer site or vision, if I may say. Nicholas holds a degree in physics and mathematics and has over 10 years of experience in the field of optical sensing and non-destructive testing. In addition to guiding product development at Sewer Wu, uh, Nicholas has developed products for and executed novel condition assessment projects spanning the globe. Over to you, Nicholas. Thanks. Hey, thank you, Kunal. Can just a quick uh, mic check, make sure you can hear me. 
Discuss it. Beautiful. So who is Sewerview Technology? Sewerview Technology is a team of scientists and engineers that are experts in completing impossible inspections, developing new technology to assess pipe the condition of uh, linear assets, both in the water and wastewater market. And Sewerview is democratizing advanced condition assessment through hardware sales and partnerships all around the world. We've had the pleasure of servicing um, engineering firms and forward thinking municipalities spanning the globe. Uh, from the remote beaches of Australia to the remote mountains of British Columbia. Failures of linear assets are on the rise. Um, and reactive uh, condition assessment is soon becoming um, a thing of the past. Uh, proactive condition assessment is um, the future. The cost of complacency is uh, just becoming well known. Um, for example, Simi Valley, California, a uh, population of just 125,000 residents, found that they saved 4.5 million annually through an implementation of a basic CCGV program. The city of Waterloo, Ontario, with a population of just 113,000, estimated a yearly $2.5 million loss if they kept using reactive asset management best practices. Repeatability issues with video coding are well documented and have limited use in predicting the remaining useful life of linear assets but still provides significant value. With more quantitative technologies, we can improve model predictions, extending existing municipal budgets and improving safety. Sewer View does this through a big idea we call quantitative condition assessment. We take measurements, not pictures alone. We model and predict the remaining useful life by finding metrics that um, are relevant to the condition of the asset. A good example of this would be for, uh, say, reinforced concrete pipe. It has a well-known failure mode that it degrades over time due to H2S gas in the sewer market. Uh, one way to assess the condition of this asset quantitatively, be, quantitatively would be to measure the remaining wall thickness as a function of time. You could do this two ways. You could create a digital twin of the asset, uh, measure the internal diameter using a technology called LiDAR and sonar, um, subtract that from a reference to create a wall thickness um, uh, inference, or you can measure it directly with a technology called pipe penetrating radar, which is a time of flight measurement based off of a reflection. Sewerview offers both of these services. Um, here's just uh, in the background image of the slide some recent LiDAR data Sewerview has collected with our robots. On the pipe penetrating radar front, typically data is represented um, as you see on the screen here. On the vertical axis, you have depth in uh, inches or meters. On the uh, horizontal axis, change in feet or meters. The yellow line represents your remaining wall thickness relative to your inner pipe wall. And the blue dots represent your reinforcement uh, position relative to your inner pipe wall as well. Pipe penetrating radar works on all non-metallic pipes, such as reinforced concrete, bic uh, brick, vitrified clay, and of course, asbestos cement, which has um, applications in the water market. It can also identify voids developing outside of the pipe wall, and it allows you to um, determine whether or not you've got a sinkhole before it becomes front page news. Sewerview deploys these sensors in a on a variety of robotic platforms. We've got large diameter pi uh, robots for pipes that range from 525 mil to 1200 mil. Um, it can travel up to a kilometer from a single access point, and of course it includes a whole host of sensors like pipe penetrating radar, LIDAR, sonar, H2S, HDCCTV, and geospatial localization. Um, for, for pipes that are much bigger than uh, um, 18 inches and up, or, or have significant amounts of flow that would restrict um, inspection, we have a float. Uh, for small diameter pipes, um, we in the range of 250 to 450 millimeters, um, we have a small diameter robot that equips a much higher frequency radar antenna that allows you to detect the relatively thin wall thickness of small diameter pipes. Moving on to a case study, um, Worthington, which is a, a, a very small city in Minnesota, has just a population of 13,000 residents, was constructing a new community center over top of two uh, overflow pipes that run from Lake Okabina into a creek. Additionally, there is a railway line that runs underneath it. So some pretty critical infrastructure for such a small city. These were 500 foot uh, sections of 42 inch reinforced concrete pipe culverts and sewer view inspected it with LIDAR and pipe penetrating radar. With LIDAR, we were able to determine things like ovality issues 
and corroborate pipe penetrating radar results that identified very little wall loss um, over time. However, sewer view was able to find that the reinforcement was very close to the inner pipe wall and um, needed to be uh, relined and rehabilitated with um, CIPP liner. Additionally, we identified a large number of voids that needed to be filled with grout injection before the construction of the community center could be completed. Thank you very much for the time. And if you have any questions, please feel free to email me uh, n.gertz at sewerview.com. Thanks, uh, Nicholas. Uh, that actually tells us, you know, like the sewer lines are thousands of kilometers, treatment plants are few. And if you do anything in the sewer lines, it has a billion dollar impact. So thanks for bringing robotics to the world of water. Um, next, we are moving with uh, our next speaker, uh, Ms. Sonia Behemel, uh, Behemel from Watershed Monitoring. Um, she is the CEO and co-founder of Watershed Monitoring and uh, Watershed Monitoring Europe. She is also an adjunct professor at Laval University and a member of the International Secretariat for Water, Solidarity Water Europe. Uh, a geographer specialized in limnology. She holds a PhD in spatial planning and regional development and has recently selected as one of the 100 women entrepreneurs who changed the world for her disruptive approach in technology to achieve the sixth United Nations Sustainable Development Goal. Uh, over to you, Sonja. Thank you very much, uh, Kunal, for the introductions. Thank you very much for everybody for being here today and tonight. Thank you for the opportunity. Um, I would like to introduce you to my company, uh, Watershed Monitoring, which is a Canadian-based company with also an office in Europe and France. And um, our credo, if you will, is that the quality of water depends on the quality of data and how it is managed. So process optimization of data collection, management and use around water are our core competence. And if I speak of us, we are a team of experts with PhDs all the way from the source to the tap to the sewer with IT experts, um, mathematicians, AI experts, deep learning experts and GIS experts. So what do we actually do? Actually, what we do is we have a vision of integrated water quality data management in terms of um, having uh, a decompartment, uh, <laughs> taking away the compartments of the different stakeholders which have to manage the water at the source, at the drinking water treatment plant and the distribution system um, to the, and bring the clean and safe water to the citizens tap. And then, of course, you also need to integrate again the information and data related to wastewater treatment and the treatment effluents. So we have this holistic vision and we believe that in order to uh, get to an optimal water quality data management, um, the data needs to be integrated in order to improve monitoring management operations communications in order to be able to improve research science and technology projects public awareness and participation uh, participation uh, and to implement legislation and policy frameworks and recommendations standards and objectives so how do we get our clients to that point is that we provide an intelligent decision support for data acquisition strategies in order to plan the data acquisition strategies to reduce uh, costs and maximize information which is produced. We also propose an expert support in data management and mining and we want to take our clients to water 4.0 in terms of process optimization also through our proprietary software Enki which is a database where you can integrate progressively all the data, metadata, GIS data, in order to have that holistic vision of your water resources. Um, so uh, as we position ourselves with our, our clients, we work with as much with consulting firms, cities, uh, private companies, NPOs and ministries. And where we actually have the advantages, where the client finds our advantages is working with us, is that there's a substantial reduction in, in the cost of data acquisition, reduction uh, uh, of data loss, uh, enhancing of clarity in decision making, justifying action, uh, reducing, um, of course, then intervention cost and operational cost, increase credibility, reduce litigation, ensure quality and availability of water, and to make sure that everybody works together from the source to the tap. 
So um, I would like to give you a couple of examples of clients and partners. So we work with more than 60 cities in Canada where we have progressively integrated the entire data from the source to the tap in order to get them to have this holistic vision. We work with more than 300 users worldwide on different data integration projects, be that for research projects, for water um, resource protection, I'm sorry, uh, for specific uh, pro projects of data acquisition. And we also work on international research and development projects with Canadian and European universities in order to uh, implement and develop early warning systems, which um, uh, help us prevent um, our um, uh, any event which could be related with the water quality problems from the source to the citizens tab. And we also work on data where we acquire data from uh, Earth observation in order to improve water quality monitoring um, in your watersheds. So if we put this in a nutshell to provide you, we have um, had there's a living laboratory, by the way, the city of Quebec. So we'd be really happy to have a living laboratory also in, uh, in Singapore is that we um, progressively and within less than a year um, managed and integrated the data from the source waters and the wastewaters, um, also from the regular monitoring of lakes and rivers, but also for the studies. We also implemented the system where we have the source water risk analysis, where we integrate, for instance, the entire, every single piece of human activity from the entire watershed uh, from the St. Lawrence River to the Great Lakes, which are several million data points, which we use in order to develop algorithms to um, have the source water risk analysis at every point in the system for in the source waters in order to improve land use planning, action plans and compliance. And then we transpose the idea to have the data within the treatment plant and the distribution system so that you know what, what comes in into your uh, system, how it affects the treatment and you can improve the treatment based on that and how it is going to affect and propagate water quality within the distribution system. So this integrative system, it wouldn't be uh, complete if you would not also add the information which comes in from your citizens. So the idea of intelligent and learning communities in the water, uh, uh, in the water sectors, you need to know what the people think about your water. It is qualitative data, but it is data. And then of course, you can also manage all your alerts with the citizens. So in order to make this data readily available, both for citizens, for managers, for operators, decision makers, the data is then aggregated to uh, easy, um, exploitable and adaptable indices so that rapidly you can see whether you have a problem at the source or at any point in your distribution system to be able to take rapid action to communicate information in a timely manner with your citizens and to increase public trust into your system. And last but not least, uh, we actually recently also started to integrate all the data from the COVID data from uh, several cities for several cities in, in their um, um, Enki system in order to help them trace COVID outbreaks um, uh, according to the uh, sewer systems and uh, areas of their municipalities. So we would be very happy to have um, a living laboratory um, in Singapore. It can be on any element of the system, but with the idea of having this progressive and integrated data management system to be able then to exploit the data to every level for every single element of your needs. So I'd like to thank you very much for your uh, time and I will be happy to answer any questions later on. Thanks, uh, Sonja. It's uh, very interesting to know that uh, you the, the, you coined the word living laboratory. I really like that. And then your product of Enki is actually integrating the whole water ecosystem to probably make uh, wiser decisions. Thank you very much. Um, well, next in lineup is myself, ladies and gentlemen. I, I, I would represent uh, Energia, uh, the managing director here. Um, uh, Singapore is the regional headquarters for uh, Energia. We are a Canadian headquartered company. Uh, and we are into the sector of uh, resource recovery in the space of water, waste, and agri-waste. So uh, next, please. So Energia meaning is anaerobic energy. So as a company, if you see this graph, this defines the company. So next to every city, there are industries and there are farms. Farms bring food, industries will actually bring industrial goods. So the blue color dots are four islands, which you see as 
resource recovery islands with energy of work. So for example, we take the city's wastewater, we will recycle the wastewater, give it back to industries or to municipalities. We would take the sludge and produce biogas out of it. Uh, previous slide, please. Um, and then on the previous slide, please. Previous, please. Thank you. And then you have the farms, which also makes waste. So we convert that waste into fertilizer and biogas, which is electricity. So renewable energy, recyclables, fertilizer, and clean water. Next, please. Uh, proudly. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah. Probably has one of the world's largest organic waste technology platform, converting wastewater biosolids, food waste, solid waste. Um, uh, food and beverage waste and agriculture waste through a series of proprietary technologies into power, gas, recyclables, fertilizer, and clean water. Next, please. So as a company headquartered in uh, Toronto um, um, and present in about four continents, we have built in the last 30 plus years about 1,600 projects in the world with over 100 plus patents. Uh, next, please. Some of the references, we can skip that. Thank you. Next, please. Some of the reference plants in the waste space. Thanks. So this slide explains what the, what the technology platform is. So if you see the heart of the technology is this anaerobic digestion plant. Uh, here we have high solids anaerobic digestion versus what we conventionally use in the wastewater treatment plants is low solids digestion. Uh, what we've said is that there are so many wastewater treatment plants in the world which have low solids digestion capacity and they could be graded to even co-digest a city is food waste or agri waste or organics entrapped in MSW. So we have proprietary pretreatment technologies, proprietary anaerobic digestion technologies. After anaerobic digestion, you usually have the solid liquid separation. So the liquid goes through a membrane process and the solids, we can either convert that into fertilizer for land application or biochar as well for land application. Next, please. So this is how currently the water and the waste sector is managed across cities and councils in the world. Next, please. So if you see, generally, there is a China wall between the wastewater department and the waste department. Generally, these two departments, departments don't speak, unlike uh, Singapore, where uh, NEA interact a lot and they do a lot of work. Um, typically, if you see, uh, a waste goes from a transfer station either to a waste treatment facility or in Asia goes to a landfill. The wastewater after treatment, the sludge goes to a landfill. So the common factor which combines both these brothers is the landfill. And when you have these kind of mechanism, the wastewater treatment plant is a net energy importer because the sludge, even if you have anaerobic digestion, doesn't produce enough electricity to take care of the parasitic load. What we have tried to change is, in the next slide, please. We try to create synergy between the waste sector and the water sector. Next, please. And how do we do that? Uh, we actually combine and make both these brothers talk by using technologies. So we have the proprietary organic extrusion technology which extracts organics from mixed waste. We don't need uh, segregated waste. So we don't need um, human behavior changes because as we all know, you know, uh, we can never get clean food waste from our homes and, and malls and, and industries. So we say that the technology has to be not dependent on human behavior. So this technology extracts organics from mixed waste, from household waste, brings that organics to an existing wastewater treatment plant and co-digest it with the sewage sludge. So now what you have is that wastewater treatment plant is a net energy exporter than an importer. And by having more heat, you can utilize that in our drying and pyrolysis process to make biochar. So what you've done is you have leveraged the existing infrastructure of a city and done more with less and produce more energy. So the utility benefits by having more power, so more revenue. Uh, the city overall benefits by reducing the cost of disposal, the environmental hazard responsible for the disposal cost, reduces greenhouse gases. Next, please. How, so this is a plant which Tin Yang mentioned. I will not go into detail. This is a demonstration plant, but a very interesting scale demonstration plant where we treat food waste from hawker centers in Singapore, and it is co-digested with sewage sludge at the Ulu Pandan demonstration facility. Uh, we are running the plant for the last four years, and we have a contract to operate and maintain the facility until December 2024. Next, please. This is a facility in California where you can see what we have done is we have co-located a waste plant next to a wastewater treatment plant. This is going to be California's largest, where we bring in external food waste, co-digest it with sewage, wastewater sludge, and sell the electricity. 
As a company, we also own and invest into projects. So we invest into projects, we build them, and we operate them for 15, 20 years. Next, please. This is an exciting facility. Uh, this is uh, North America's largest uh, biogas uh, or bioenergy facility where we convert about 700 tons of food waste and 300 tons of wastewater sludge into renewable natural gas. Uh, uh, this is a gas made from not fossil fuel, but biogas converted into renewable natural gas injected into the gas grid. So next slide will explain that um, we convert food waste and sewage sludge. Next, please into renewable natural gas uh, fertilizer, which is going to be applied on the farming community. So if you look at it that way, imagine the waste and the wastewater of a city now being converted not only into renewable energy, but renewable natural gas, which replaces fossil fuel based gases. OK, and also produces fertilizer, which goes back to the soil. With this, I will end my presentation here. Um, thank you. Um, if you're okay, Vivian, I'll move to the question and answer round. I think uh, we are running a bit late, uh, but we have some interesting questions. Um, you can put a slide on the Q&A. So without the time, um, I will ask preliminarily a few questions to the participants and the technology companies. Um, maybe one is for um, Medad, you and uh, Nicholas. Um, that what are the challenges your technology can solve when it comes to condition of assets in the network or the pipes and sewage. Maybe Nicholas wants to go first. Uh, that's Surveyor's main mission. We develop technology and uh, methodologies and um, equipment to assess the condition of uh, both water and wastewater assets. Um, we provide uh, unique methodologies for assessing these conditions by measuring remaining wall thicknesses or um, determining things like uh, corrosion, sediment buildup, ovality, and so forth. Interesting. Um, Meda, do you have any comment on that question? Like, you know, how, how your technology can solve the condition yes. assessment of water network? Sure. Uh, the condition assessment of any pipes, um, we believe that uh, looking at the existing information about the, um, the geo data and also and any information coming from any sources, um, like the one that uh, um, my friend just mentioned from Suru, um, these are all valuable information that helps for better planning. And of course, uh, systems like Suru can gather a lot of information from the pipes, which is uh, obviously is not um, available everywhere. But if that will be available, and um, all these information can give us um, a better knowledge about how the things are working. Also, um, when we have some um, overall understanding about the network, probably the implementation of um, sewerwood technology will be much more uh, feasible and probably um, more people can make benefit of it. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, Meta. Thanks. Thanks for that. I think. Okay, so um, I think I have an interesting question, Sonja, for you from Watershed is that, you know, digitalization is rapidly transforming the Asian economic landscape. And Singapore's holistic approach places the island nation in a prime position for thriving the digital future. Okay, how does your technology enable water utilities and operators, for example, QB, to drive a shift from reactive to adaptive and even preventive water resource management from source to tap? Sonja? Uh, thank you very much for, for the question. Actually, if we look at the specific case um, of PUB, for, for instance, you have uh, four national taps of water, which you would like to, which you're exploiting, would like to exploit and ensure its um, durability in terms of quantity and quality. So that comes with a lot of data and in from uh, water quality related data, water quantity related data and land use data. So you want to integrate all this information into one system and then relate it to the treatment facilities for the, the drinking water and the water quality and quantity uh, which is being distributed through your system. So eventually, if you want to be able to have a very clear vision 
of how much water and what quality of water is coming in and how uh, to which point it is being used and uh, rejected back into into nature after uh, efficient treatment well you want to be able to connect all these very interesting applications which are out there which measure water whether that is um, um, if you say regulatory monitoring with data which is being analyzed in the laboratories whether these are um, uh, devices are you, uh, which are uh, connecting the information of the data collected in, within the system, whether that is um, qu qualitative data coming in from the citizens, you want to be able to have all this information in one single place and then to be able to exploit it with all these tools which are out there these days with uh, which the AI tools which were proposed um, the information from the other companies which were uh, explaining how they can uh, detect the quality of the sewers or probably even the distribution system that is all types of data which you want to have in one place because every piece right. of that information provides something else and that's what we right. do we collect integrate the data <laughs> right thanks Sonja that was a comprehensive answer I think we have an interesting question from the audience and I think Nicholas, this is for you. The question is, uh, does your technology cater to large diameter steel and ductile iron water pipes? And if yes, do you need to do what do you need to dewater the pipe or do you have a solution uh, which can do it under pressure inside the same pipeline? Yeah, when inspecting uh, large diameter pressure pipes, uh, there's no one size fits all. Um, access is usually a large consideration when inspecting these pipes. Sewer view typically does not inspect under full pressurized conditions. Um, we do, we have provided uh, solutions for digitizing these large diameter assets um, as well as measuring the wall thickness through technology like ultrasonics. But as I mentioned briefly in the presentation, pipe penetrating radar uh, only works in non-metallic pipes such as um, uh, concrete, asbestos, cement, and, and thermoplastics. Okay, okay. And, uh, you know, how does your technology reduce the need for, you know, bigger and larger infrastructure? Could you tell the audience that how your technology reduces that need? Many? Yes, um, good question. Thank you for that. The key fact about our technology is we don't treat symptoms. We, we get to the root cause of the problem using microbial formulations that take different metabolic pathways to degrade waste, use less energy, a combination of our analytics as well and our, our approach that we take. Uh, for example, in our municipal application, we leverage the collection system for preconditioning, pretreatment. So that allows us to significantly reduce the organic load of treatment facilities as an example. But that know-how, um, ability to get to root cause of the problem and boost up the microbial performance is key to enabling us to leverage the existing infrastructure to eliminate the, the common negative byproducts. Whereas, as an example, if you're treating odors in a collection system or lift station, you would you would require alternative either chemical or equipment to be uh, housed. Whereas we it disengage the mechanism of what creates the odor by the synergistic effect of our our, our, our bacteria in the system. Okay, Th thanks uh, for that. I think it clearly explains a little bit that how, how this uh, technology could uh, avoid larger capital expenditures for the government. AI and data management companies on the call today. Can you hear me, guys? Well, okay. So now, can you repeat the last part? Hi, Vivian. Can you repeat the last part? Okay, so I, I was just saying that, can you hear me well now? Yes. Okay. I think there is a very question and this is for all the artificial intelligence, data management and the digital technologies on the call today. And I would say 
Devesh for you, uh, Meda, Water Lakes, and even Sonja from uh, Watershed. I think the interesting question is that, you know, with all these artificial technologies established in a city's water treatment plant, which is a drinking water treatment plant, or, uh, you know, um, uh, in the pipeline network, which actually essentially supplies clean drinking water to human beings for consumption, or discharges the wastewater. Now, a gloomy cyber hacking and cyber security issue in the whole world, right? Um, cyber hackings have been seen to sabotage a water treatment plant, or it could also sabotage a city. So the interesting question is, how do you or your technologies ensure data security? So I would, and since this is an interesting question, I mean, even for the Singapore ecosystem, I would really like to have a quick overview from uh, Devesh, you first, Medad, you second, and maybe Sonja. Devesh? Devesh, can you hear the question? Great, yeah, sorry, I was muted by um, the host. Uh, thanks, great, great question, Kunal. I think, you know, um, you know, I think we're coming to a point in the water sector where uh, the buzzwords are trying now turn into value. And I think that's a key thing to, to realize, right? I think um, the operators of the plants, the owners of the plants, as much as they are excited with technology, I think people only care about value. Um, but when, when you and I joined this um, webinar with WebEx, like you click the join button, did you think about what technology they were using on the back end, right? Likely not. And I think um, that's what I think we've seen now happen more is people talk about the value technology brings. And I think I would just encourage people to continuously doing that. So people start seeing the real, real benefit uh, that can bring to plants. And, you know, with any technology, um, transition, there comes unknowns or, or new things that we've got to figure out. And cybersecurity, uh, among other things, is a critical one when it comes to data-driven technologies in general. And at this point, what, what our, you know, at our organization, we take it very seriously, um, whether that's through third-party testing, um, making sure our entire technology stack is quite strong and best practices in the industry are used, but also more importantly, the whole go-to-market strategy. Um, like we have, you know, it's, um, very soberly decided to be a read-only product for our plants. So we don't actually, you know, when you go to a plant, there's operational technology that actually runs and operates the plant. You know, we all came through, we read about the Florida um, incident as well. And, you know, it happens when, when the operation technology is tampered with, and that is something that needs to be taken very good care of. And then the other side is IT. It's actually like taking all the historical data, the current data and putting that into an historian or sending that to other people. So when you're in that realm, you compare yourself to like email or the different types of security standard. And then suddenly you kind of lift your limit to what value you can create. And that's what we try to do for our plants. We work in the IT side, we take best security measures, we encrypt our data and then stay completely separate. And if you can, you know, create some tangible energy benefit, chemical benefit, risk benefit to the plants, I think, uh, right. to win -win for, for all of us. Right. Thanks, Devesh. Uh, Meda, do, do, do you have any suggestions that you know how when you implement such solutions in a utility, how do you ensure uh, them that, you know, their data is secure? Um, thank you very much for asking. For asking um, this question from a person that believes more in sharing the data rather than uh, putting uh, logs on it. But of course, I understand that uh, information that I mean accessing to the uh, uh, control systems in the water utilities is something serious and I know that there are a lot of um, expert companies that specifically deal, deal with um, problems like this and for my solutions I always outsource this these sort of uh, services um, I, I, this is what I do for uh, many parts of my services. Uh, yeah, uh, my focus is more on the AI side of the problem and problem solving. But um, I, I know and I've been approached and I've worked with companies that have very sophisticated type of um, um, securing the lines for transferring any sort of information from a SCADA data system to, uh, to where it's going to be processed. 
So, uh, right. yeah, that is uh, out of my, uh, uh, out of the uh, scope for me, but uh, I still wanted to add that I think that uh, even sharing data um, in, if it would be done uh, wisely and with a good target to solve a problem, it is something that uh, can be like a big investment uh, from utility companies and it can enable a lot of thinkers, entrepreneurs to get into this space and solve the problem. I'm sure many of us were, were not here if we didn't have access to uh, this kind of data and if it would be available to, for the people, again, uh, with, a, with a goal, with a specific goal to solve a problem for the utility. And that would be a very good thing even to share the data. But okay, it was about security and yeah. That's what, how I think. Thank you. Okay, Amanda. But I think the answer here, because, sorry, we have, we have already reached about 10.30 a.m., but I think the answer is that um, you, you as entrepreneurs and technology providers have considered this particular aspect in mind and, and that you have enough convincing answers to convince utilities and cities that um, your technology application is no different than, as Desh mentioned, uh, clicking the join button for this webinar or sending emails across. So. What I hear is that there are solutions and that it is something as a common factor you have considered while developing digital solutions. Now, with this in mind, uh, I think, you know, uh, I would like to just quickly move on to the SWA updates. Uh, next slide, please. And any other question and answers, you can definitely ask Vivian and, and, uh, and the other team and British Guide, the High Commission. So can we go to the next slide, please? Hello, Vivian. Yeah, uh, Kuna, we actually have upcoming webinars on the 17th March and 24th March. On the 17th March, we have a hybrid event behind the scene through Blue World Premier, which is sponsored by DuPont, Swiss and Zylan. And on the 24th March, we are doing another webinar with the Israeli Digital Water Technologies with the Ministry of economy and industry of israel in singapore yeah thanks vivian actually te my technology is i don't know today giving us some trouble because the screen just got uh, freeze but yeah uh, thank you for that and 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 this i think we come to an end of this interesting webinar today on behalf of pub and swa i would once again like to thank her excellency miss lynn mcdonald for her time uh ting liang for explaining the work at pub and future technology requirements to all companies and uh, to all the entrepreneurs and water companies uh, to take your time to present. Uh, I think developing technologies and commercializing them is no simple work. And it takes a lot of grit, passion and determination with this technical knowledge. Um, so thank you for creating these technologies, uh, which would definitely help all the, the water sector in a whole. We hope this session was enlightening and informative for all, and we hope this could be a catalyst for strategic cooperation between Canadian and Singapore ecosystem companies. Uh, it could lead to develop tailor-made solutions for Asian youth and be launching you into the ASEAN market from Singapore. Uh, please connect with Vivian from SWA and Vitishka from the High Commission if you have any further interest in any of these technologies. Wishing you all, uh, you know, uh, rest of good evening in Canada and good day here. Uh, thank you once again for joining the webinar. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye, everyone.